What happened at your work which caused multiple people to all quit at once? Story 1. Owners retired and they were literally the greatest people. Both very sweet but kept the place running like a well-oiled machine. They took pretty good care of us and their restaurant. When they left, they gave the restaurant over to their nephew, who at the time was a busboy waiter, kinda standoffish. Didn't really interact with us too much, a bit lazy at times, but for the most part, did his shit and went home. He seemed okay. Until he got the power of being the owner. He fired four people, including two of the four cooks and two of the three dishwashers, literally that same day, on a Friday night, just before the dinner rush. All because he didn't like their attitude. He refused to allow people to take vacation that they'd already requested and gotten confirmed by the original owners, would change the schedule randomly without telling anyone and then scream at people when they missed a shift or came in late because of it. He refused to replenish the kitchen until we were literally already out of things, then take forever to put in the orders. He showed up randomly and would drink at the bar, for free of course because he was the owner, and then bring in all of his buddies to drink with him. Together, they'd get way out of hand and grab at women and try to start fights. Within the first month of him being the owner, over half the staff had quit, usually walking out literally in the middle of their shifts. After being screamed at, they'd basically throw down their aprons and tell everyone that they were so sorry, but they couldn't do it anymore. After the last cook, this big dude who usually kept the kitchen laughing and running at a decent pace started crying in the middle of his shift and dropped everything he was doing after the boss came and yelled at him for being too slow and making slop. Then walked out the rest of us, just belled along with him. Four months later, the place was closed. His aunt and uncle were absolutely furious and devastated that he'd run the business they'd built up for over 30 years into the ground. Story 2 I was hired by the new owners to replace an existing manager. I was under the impression that he was moving on to another job somewhere. So, after about four days, I asked him where he was headed and if he's excited. He just looks blankly at me and says, I'm not going anywhere. I'm just training you as the assistant manager. Right? The look I gave him must have been a great tip-off because he got up and walked into one of the new owner's offices. After about 30 seconds, they were screaming at each other and he just storms out of the office, grabs his stuff, gives me the finger, and leaves. Over the next few days, I'm trying to calm things down with the employees. They're not faulting me, but now they have a very bad taste in their mouths about the new ownership. Over about a 7 to 10 day time period, my team shrank from 15 people down to 3. I hobbled along with that the best that I could while we tried to hire new people, but the new owners were offering so little we had trouble finding people. After three months or so of that, I started to get fed up and overwhelmed, and when the owners started to get on to me about missed deadlines, I had had it. We were still only at five people, two of which were brand new and still training. They didn't allow me to refuse work or push deadlines out. They expected the same output as a 15-person team. So, after my third day in a row of being berated for missing a deadline that was impossible to make, I quit. Story 3 They laid off half the company with no warning. This included a gentleman who was less than a year from retirement and had been there for 35 plus years. The company was shocked when half the remaining people abandoned ship shortly thereafter. Story 4 The company consistently outpaced competing firms and found itself emerging as one of the industry-leading agencies. This was also a California tech firm, so shorts, flip-flops, beers at lunch, getting high on the roof were all rather common. But we were rapidly growing and the atmosphere and location made us a hot ticket for talent. Anyway, CFO and CMO cashed out and the CEO decided to totally remodel the company by making it far more corporate. On top of all this, they implemented unattainable goals and removed our work from home policy. The final straw was they removed our rather generous vacation policy and replaced it with unlimited vacation, which was a facade for you can take as much vacation as you want if we approve it. Like a fourth of the company quit and immediately landed at better jobs. Also profit tanked. Story 5. Oh fucking boy. I worked at Buffalo Wild Wings a few years as a line cook. Two different stores, same fucking pay. It was the type of work where you ask for a raise and they scoff and say, yeah, me too. Anyways, I had been pretty dead set on quitting sooner or later. Our kitchen was very small. Most people ended up closing four to five days a week with doubles on the weekends, while still attending school full time as it was a college town. On Super Bowl fucking Sunday, 
a useless co-worker who ducked out in the bathroom most of the shift finally stopped showing. And in response, the managerial staff delegated closing to my pal Jay. Dude was a fucking delight to be around. Hands down the best co-worker ever. Jay had told him that due to being a full-time student, he no longer wanted to be first in and last out. 4 p.m. to 12 a.m. 1 a.m. on the weekends. They basically told him to go fuck himself and that they didn't have any more shifts for him. Immediately, me and one other cook walked to the office and quit on the spot. Buffalo Wild Wings lost four cooks on Super Bowl Sunday, leaving them with seven full-time students on the schedule. It was a managerial shit show. Story 6. When I was 16, I worked in the concession stand at a minor league baseball stadium. Minimum wage at the time was $5.15 an hour. This job paid 8 and it was always in the evening, so it was perfect work for a high school student. The only bad thing was our manager was terrible. The main manager would throw toddler tantrums about once a shift over stupid bullshit like not ordering enough of a specific beer, she did the ordering, or running out of pre-cut lemons for tea. One night the stadium was running a promotion and it was incredibly busy, easily two or three times the normal volume of customers. We were all working our asses off, handling multiple roles each with absolutely no downtime. Although we all cleaned as we worked, nobody had a chance to do a thorough cleaning for the whole shift because of the never-ending horde of hungry baseball fans. The manager showed up three to four hours late per usual and throws the biggest fucking tantrum ever over the unswept floor. Finally, she announces, Listen up, you lazy fucks. Minimal work gets minimal pay. Everybody's being paid minimum wage tonight because you slobs won't clean anything up. Both of our bartenders and the bar back quit on the spot, which caused a chain reaction. We all took off our aprons and hats to leave. She blocked the exit and was red in the face from screaming. So one of the cooks climbed out of one of the big serving windows where we serve customers. So I did the same and most of the staff followed. Bear in mind, this was all happening in front of like 200 plus customers. Of course, my final paycheck got lost, so I had to file wage theft complaint to the Texas Workforce Commission. Story 7. Restructure of the way we're paid. What I used to do involved about 40% client interaction, 20% team and coworker interaction, and 40% paperwork and case coordination stuff. Based on what we do, that means only 40% of the time is technically billable. And there are really sticky rules for what isn't billable. So logically, we were being paid on a salary model. Q management saying we can only make money for the time we have that is actually billable. A fourth of the department quit. Two of us on the same day. Story 8. I used to work at a McDonald's, and we had a terrible manager who hated a lot of people working there. Everyone else hated him too, but no one wanted to call him out on his shit and quit. I was the first to do it, because I requested two weeks off in August of that year, about three months in advance. My family likes to plan our summer vacations early on. When August came around, he had my schedule set up for all of August off except for those two specific weeks. There was no way that he could have misinterpreted my request. When I got my schedule, I stormed into the restaurant, called him out on everything, and then quit on the spot. About two weeks after that, I heard from one of my work friends that five other people had enough and quit as well. I kind of felt good to be the first. Story 9 The owner died and his idiot son took over and decided that the company didn't make him enough money and started to implement cost-cutting measures, like turning off the AC in the building. 